Thank you so much, Betty, for those inspirational words. Um, you said maybe we didn't come here today to think about our role in this problem, but I know that's why I'm here today. That's why I'm in this role at Friends of the Everglades, and I think a lot of us in the room are looking for the solutions that we can be part of as humans who have contributed to problems across the Everglades. Betty also said something that moved me. She said, listen to the water. And I want to engage that sense of imagination a little bit longer to talk about the broader cause that has brought us here. So if you live in South Florida, in the urban area of South Florida, it might be tempting to think of the Everglades as some distant national park or preserve area beyond the city limits. But actually, the Everglades is all around us. In fact, we're in the footprint of the historic Everglades right now, as Betty said, from the central Everglades to the coasts. So where we're gathered, this was once mostly open pine forest and an undergrowth of saw palmetto. So if you close your eyes, you can kind of picture what was once here. And to think about that, I think, helps us realize what we're losing. Because over the past century, more than half of the historic Everglades have been cleared and drained for agriculture or urban development. Those losses continue to mount. In fact, several football fields worth of forest and other valuable habitat are lost each day in Florida. And nobody in this room will be surprised to hear that that development pressure is mounting every single day. It's more intense than ever. At the same time, our collective future depends on the survival of these remnant Everglades, on protecting the wetlands and open spaces that remain. And we have to get it right. It's not just about habitat and wildlife, although those are unto themselves very worthy causes, but it's also about some very practical purposes to protect our drinking water supply in Florida, to reduce our increasing flood risk, and to safeguard our future in the face of the uncertainties of climate change. Friends of the Everglades works every single day on these urgent causes. Our legacy goes back 55 years, as you heard, but we don't rest on those laurels. And this is an especially urgent moment in Everglades history that we're living in. As Betty mentioned, discharges from Lake Okeechobee commenced last month, again, causing damage to the northern estuaries, we tend to shift damage around in this ecosystem because we haven't holistically addressed the solutions. Lake Okeechobee itself is suffering. High water levels have plagued the central Everglades. A mysterious ailment afflicting sawfish saw and other species of fish has recently emerged in the Florida Keys. You've probably read about that. And meanwhile, sugarcane burning continues to pollute communities in the Glades region south of Lake Okeechobee, and that's an injustice that needs to be remedied that we continue to work on. Amen. Our board member, Robert Mitchell, knows that well. So we're working on all of these fronts, and this is hard work, and each of you here today supports that hard work. And I also want to highlight some of the milestones, some of the progress we've made. So over the past year, we expanded our science capacity at Friends of the Everglades with the addition of Dr. Tom Van Lent to our team. He's one of the world's leading Everglades hydrologists, and with his input, we're doing the hard work to do scientific analysis of Everglades restoration projects that are expensive, multi-billion dollar projects, some of them. We wanna make sure these aren't just big, expensive infrastructure projects paid for by taxpayers, but that they actually work to restore the Everglades. We can't do that without Tom. We also have elevated... <laughs> We have elevated our legislative accountability work in Tallahassee. Tallahassee can seem like a, a very distant place. Um, in fact, this legislature is in session right now. We received grant funding from someone who saw the truth we were speaking and how we're explaining these complex legislative issues to the public and gave us a grant to elevate that work. So we're very proud to have done that over the past year and we intend to grow on it. 
And once again, we've locked arms with allies in the Glades community to continue to push for reform of sugarcane burning, an end to it, and broader reform of the outdated sugar program and the federal farm bill that props up that kind of pollution. The, this kind of work has inspired people to stand with us, including the family of Sally Jude, who's here today, whose support and memory of their late mother has advanced this kind of effort. In fact, one of the last events Sally attended was our second Marjorie Stoneman Douglas legacy celebration, so it's especially meaningful to have her family here today. And while it's especially necessary to fight today's battles, we also are aware of the need to prepare the next generation of environmental advocates. Another significant accomplishment over the past year has been the expansion of our Young Friends of the Everglades program, which provides education to elementary students, sparking their curiosity and connection to the Everglades. We're in 35 classrooms around South Florida now, and we're going to double that, probably more than double that by the end of next year. We have a great new education and outreach director, Amanda Purnell, who's in infusing that program with energy. The Karen, here's to Young Friends. <laughs> The Karen Mashburn Environmental Scholars Program has been a catalyst for Young Friends of the Everglades, created through the generosity of Karen's husband, Jerry Mashburn, who's also here today. <laughs> Jerry has provided a $10,000 a year scholarship for a recipient, a special recipient, and that recipient also receives an internship at Friends of the Everglades. And Autumn Bryan, our first Karen Mashburn Scholar, is here today. Give a little wave to the crowd, Autumn. <laughs> Autumn did incredible work. She was actually uh, getting a master's degree and working as a librarian when she came to us, so she created Everglades kits to go into public libraries during her internship, a great effort. We could not do these things without the gener generous support of people like Jerry and Sally Jude's family and the many others in the room who believe in the integrity of our organization and the value of our work. I'm grateful to all of them here today and to all of you who stand with us. The Everglades has never needed us more than it needs us today. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of our incredible staff at Friends of the Everglades who do the work day in, day out to make these things happen. So Gil Smart, Allie Hartman, Mickey Blumenthal, Scott Brown, Amanda Purnell, Leah Voss, Tom Van Lint, Diane and Naomi, you're here too. Thank you to our staff. Please give a round of applause. Give a wave. 